Um, I think we'll get started now. Uh, this is going to be a, just a quick presentation about the streamer network, uh, what it is. Usually it takes a few goes to, to, to really grok what the streamer network is, so I'll do my best. I'll show some use cases and uh, what we're up to and kind of the status of the project, because we've been going at this for four or five years now. It's been a big infrastructure build, and we're kind of coming out of that uh, with a launch next week. So it's uh, quite an exciting time. So what is the streamer network? Uh, at the end of the day, it, we transport streams of messages. So uh, the streams, uh, if you're familiar with PubSub terminology, streams are like channels. Uh, they're anchored in blockchains. What that means is that the metadata and the access control is stored on the blockchain, currently Polygon. Uh, it's incentivized with cryptocurrency. So it's actually free to use, but uh, for a certain level of quality of service, this is where the token comes in and incentivizes uh, a better quality of service. And it's powered by everyday people that provide reliable bandwidth. And what I mean by this is that in the Web2 world, when you need real-time data availability, say if I wanted to uh, make a push notification to everyone in the room or some sort of uh, streaming data use case, I would need to go to the Googles or Amazons, some sort of uh, big cloud provider. Whereas in Streamer, what you can do is you can basically hire these internet strangers that run broken nodes that help uh, uh, propagate messages throughout the network and it goes to where it needs to go. So maybe just a, a brief meta comment about the space is that uh, blockchains alone are, are not going to be the solve for Web3. Uh, we, we saw this kind of... Uh, we saw, we saw this play out in 2017 when, you know, there was this big gold rush of all the opportunities that we could see in front of us, and all we had was this really slow and expensive, essentially databases. This is what a, a blockchain is, essentially. It's, it has very good properties of immutability and, uh, and security, but it's, it's slow and expensive, and, you know, we're not going to make decentralized Ubers or decentralized WhatsApps with, with just blockchains alone. We need more. And what I'm driving at here is that uh, we need a Web3 stack that's comparable to the Web2 stack. And you can see some, some familiar faces here, uh, SIA, Skynet, uh, decentralized storage and, and web hosting. That's a very key part. Uh, Streamer provides the, the real-time data availability. And all these protocols can work together. So it's, it's very much uh, when we compete with platforms that kind of have it all behind the scenes, uh, the, the open protocols need to, to work together and create these uh, vibrant uh, use cases by kind of reaching for the protocols that can do a certain thing uh, the best in the best way with, with a given pros and cons. So this is what a uh, stream topology looks like, uh, essentially. So uh, these dots here are nodes, and uh, they can either be application nodes or mining nodes. And essentially, they can either be uh, publishing or subscribing. So that means uh, pushing data into the network or pulling data out of the network. Or they can just be participating in the transportation of messages around the uh, topology. So uh, what is the unlock that, that the streaming network gives to these uh, Web3 applications or just any sort of application? Uh, it's fast and scalable, so we've worked really hard on this. We really want it to be uh, competitive, kind of like Skynet wants to be competitive with the Web2 uh, CDN offering. We want to be competitive with the uh, cloud offering for real-time data. So we offer sub-second ordered message delivery over the peer-to-peer -peer network. So blockchains measure latency in seconds. We, we measure it in milliseconds. So typically, you can expect maybe 200 to 300 milliseconds for... Uh, data to propagate to where you need it to go. Uh, it's, a, it's, of course, censorship resistant and uh, it scales quite well. It's, it's secure. Every message, every byte of data is cryptographically signed and end-to-end -end encrypted. And uh, control to your data is uh, made possible by our access control layer, which is held on the uh, smart contracts. And what this enables is great composability with all the other uh, EVM compatible smart contracts uh, in the space. So you can imagine that uh, if you own an NFT, for an example, you could have access rights to a certain stream. So this is all possible because of the, 
composability and the access control which lives on chain. Uh, it's serverless, so it runs anywhere that JavaScript runs. So it runs in the browser, it runs in Raspberry Pis, it'll probably run in your toaster. Uh, it's very lightweight. Um, it can uh, do what it needs to do very easily. And uh, it's free to use as well. So it's, it's sort of a public good in this way in that uh, kind of like if you've used uh, BitTorrent before, you kind of you notice that it just works. You don't have to uh, give your credit card details to uh, use BitTorrent. Uh, in the same way, uh, the streaming network will work based on the intrinsic value that the nodes uh, offer by uh, publishing and subscribing to the data. They are also running a light node as well. So if you've been following the, the Moxie uh, controversy with his uh, uh, appraisal of Web3, uh, basically, this is, uh, we, we kind of understood this from an early stage in that uh, we wanted the applications to be first-class citizens on the network and the, the protocol operates in a sort of shared responsibility way where each application has a responsibility to propagate messages to their neighbours. And you can also monetize as well. So in the Web3 world, you have access, you, you own your own data, and so you can sell your own data. So uh, if you feel uncomfortable about this, um, you don't have to, of course, but uh, as sort of the, the sad truth is it's happening already behind your backs when you, when you drive a car, your, that car data is being sold and, and monetized again and again uh, without your consent and uh, without uh, rewards coming back to you. So in Web3, we can actually change this and make it a, a fair data economy. And to, to, get, to this, uh, get to this fair data economy, we've uh, made a data union framework, and that's a way to crowdsource and crowdsell your data. So with, with the network, what can you do with it? Uh, here is, here is a, a list of use cases that we see activating. Uh, data monetization, I mentioned. Uh, DevOps, now this, this is one of my favorite uh, sort of use cases. So uh, imagine a, uh, another Web3 network that wants to gather metrics about its own network. Now, uh, it can't reach for uh, centralized cloud providers because it kind of breaks the decentralization. If they're, if they're really uh, passionate about decentralization, you have to kind of uh, do it all decentralized. So streaming network can be sister nodes to uh, a different decentralized network. Uh, gaming is, a, is an interesting one. So you can imagine massive multiplayer games or even meta, metaverse applications where, let's say, for example, your, uh, your position in, in the metaverse could be uh, publishing into a stream and perhaps uh, that location data could even be monetized and you can imagine the sorts of uh, design patterns that can, can emerge from this. Uh, IoT messaging, um, that's, a, that's a very obvious one, uh, publishing and subscribing to data. Uh, networking middleware um, and uh, blockchain networking. So even blocks on a blockchain could be uh, transported over streamer. Uh, this, is, this is a use case we, we hope to see uh, activate and uh, we think it's going to be one of the the, the killer features of the streaming network. So what I'm getting at here is that there's a certain protocol market fit that we're observing. And uh, over, the, over the last four years, we, we sort of had this you know, white paper vision, but it, it really comes down to the ecosystem to describe how, uh, the network, how the network fits into the ecosystem. The ecosystem's moving so fast it, it's it, it's quite uh, it's quite interesting to to kind of learn uh, how the network fits into the ecosystem while we're building it. And we're seeing two main uh, use cases or two main tracks: uh, the bare metal data transport and uh, the data unions, uh, fair data uh, market economy uh, that uh, we're building as well. So on the uh, kind of bare metal streamer. Um, what are, what are the, some of the, the best applications that we can think of? And, uh, and we think that chat or social is, is probably a, a, very, uh, a very powerful thing that we can do on streamer quite easily. And this is, you know, we're an infrastructure provider, but we can also kind of uh, uh, see, kind of activate a little bit before the, the ecosystem comes around to it. So we, 
we believe that uh, decentralized uh, group wallet chat is going to be a, a huge application. We don't want to own this, but we want uh, you know the community to build this, but we're going to kind of seed that imagination by uh, creating uh, essentially yeah, a decentralized uh, wallet chat uh, quite easily. So it's just a, a little front end on top of the on top of the streaming network, and we will have uh, this amazing uh, messaging uh, application that uh, doesn't exist in in the web free space. We're all communicating over Discord. I mean, my goodness, let's, uh, <laughs> someone needs to splash some water on us. This is crazy. Um, and what what's amazing about uh, these sorts of social applications built on Streamer is that we can actually uh, point and shoot to uh, on chain communities. So, for example, you can think of uh, we can create a chat room for everybody that owns an ENS name, for example, and they can just chat uh, in their browser. They sign a message that says, yes, this is me. And they have decentralized, verifiable, open permissionless uh, chat. And I think this is going to activate, uh, uh, you know, a whole whole slew of uh, different design patterns, whether it be token gated discord, channels and uh yeah lots of lots of opportunity there and i thought i'd mention uh dhs as well so this was a application that uh is being uh built on streamer and uh one of the great things is that they they reached the skynet for their decentralized front end so this was one of the reasons why we reached out to the skynet folks and we saw this great uh fit between what our builders kind of see as important for decentralization they want the uh, messaging infrastructure, but they also want a decentralized CDN. So this was this was a fantastic uh, showcase of, of uh, how these open protocols can work together to create a, a richer application. And so all the moves on the uh, on the chessboard are happening over over streams on streamer. And this is purely this is uh, I mean it's it's hard to to grok it immediately, but this is. This is direct peer-to-peer -peer, uh, gaming. So this is one computer chatting with another computer. There's no server in the middle. And, uh, and of course, on the left here is a, is a chat box as well, so you can have uh, chat as well as uh, chess. What's the name of the app? Uh, DChess. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so he's, he's also experimenting with NFT pieces, which I find also quite exciting. So the idea is that you can have uh, uh, NFTs that are augmented by real-time data. And so if you can imagine a, a chess piece that uh, maybe gains some, some flair or some colors by overtaking certain pieces, and the, the NFT would be augmented by this uh, real-time decentralized data stream. Uh, currently, it's just usually a, a URL to an IPFS resource that uh, it can actually be uh, quite uh, quite an immersive uh, experience as well. And uh, you can imagine with NFT communities, you can also chat with uh, different owners of NFTs. So there's plenty of ways to, to mix and match. So next I'll, I'll talk about data unions. So this is <laughs> this is an outdated slide as of last week because now the, the number is over 30 million. Uh, that's been raised by data unions, so I, I think that th this space is going to grow very quickly. And uh, a data union is a way to crowdsource and crowd sell uh, data in a, in a fair and sustainable way with rich consent. And so the pattern here is that use the streamer network, have an application that runs a streamer node that has uh, certain streams, and uh, your users are uh, publishers into that stream, into that data collecting app. And uh, the streams are compiled into a product that goes onto a marketplace. And when a data buyer comes along and buys access to those streams, uh, all the people that contributed to that uh, data get uh, a, a fair slice of, their, of uh, the, the earnings from uh, the sales of that data. So uh, you can see it kind of forms a, a loop here. So data comes in and value comes uh, back to the data provider. And so one example uh, is Squash. So this is a browser extension. Inside the browser extension, it runs the streamer node and it's collecting your browsing habits and uh, basically uh, uh, selling them with your you know, full 
with full transparency and rich consent, and it's offering a, a business model better than targeted advertising, essentially. And so you're getting crypto rewards back just by uh, surfing the internet. Another one is Demo, and they're a device that you plug into your electric car, kind of like a Raspberry Pi device that goes in the OBD port of the car, and uh, it uh, collects battery data and uh, diagnostics, things like this. Uh, sends it through the streaming network, I think via Helium, and uh, and then you, you start getting rewards for uh, driving your car around. So we've seen, uh, you know, play to earn, this is drive to earn, swash is surf to earn. You, you, we can see a pattern here, and uh, I think it's growing very, very quickly. And just to, to match these two concepts together, we have the streaming network, which is uh, the enabling economy. So it's providing the data distribution, the infrastructure to make this happen. And on top on the application layer is the enabled economy. So this is where the data monetization of the content of the data comes into play. Now data unions wouldn't make sense if you built it on AWS or you know, some other cloud provider because they would have uh, too much power and it, it wouldn't be uh, decentralized. And lastly, so we've been working four or five years. Uh, mainnet is next week, so woohoo. And uh, yeah, yeah, and this is, this is what we've been working very hard for. It's open, permissionless, decentralized. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a great moment for the project. And uh, the community also voted to have, uh, to inflate the token supply to encourage new miners to come along. So if you do run a node, you will be earning uh, rewards. I think uh, a slight bit of alpha here on, on day one, um, I think the, the yields are gonna be very high. So uh, it, it pays to be early uh, to be on the network and, and kind of help support this decentralized infrastructure. And uh, so lastly, I'll just touch on the, uh, on the tokenomics. So the tokenomics aren't, aren't here yet. They'll arrive at the end of the year. So the uh, inflation tokenomics are a bit of a stopgap until then. But how it works, if you're interested, is that uh, the stream sponsor, or usually the stream creator, will push in data tokens into a bounty contract. And that bounty contract acts as kind of like a summoning spell for broker nodes to come in and provide the, uh, the backbone of a, of a stream topology. And those broker nodes will need to stake to join that agreement. It's like a service layer agreement. And uh, their, their promise is to provide uh, reliable bandwidth and uh, stable uptime for the stream, which prevents uh, against uh, churning and improves the quality of service. And in return, they get those data tokens. And on top of this, we also have uh, a, a delegation flow. So you can also delegate on certain broker nodes that you think they're going to be able to provide uh, good yield for you as well. So this is largely uh, inspired by the graph and uh, yeah, that, that will activate later this year. And well, lastly, yeah, protocols, not, not platforms. So we have this great opportunity to all work together and create a uh, very um, uh, composable and uh, immersive experiences by just uh, reaching for the right protocols. And if we all work together, then uh, we can we can compete with platforms. I think the, the, the Web3 protocols are, are kind of off to a slow start because building decentralized things uh, is quite difficult and there's usually some trade-offs that uh, you know we usually have to make things a little slower or a little harder. But uh, eventually once we all sort of work together and uh, uh, are able to compete with Web2, then we'll really kind of uh, hockey stick away from uh, what Web2 can provide. And uh, that's how we win. Okay, uh, thank you very much.